Hi everyone, Conor McDonald here from the Ask Tom team with another episode of Ask Tom TV. I'm recording this via the webcam today, which is why it probably looks a bit grainy. That's because I'm just getting ready for the APAC OUC webinar series to commence. I'll be doing the first talk on 12 two new features. You can see there the link at the bottom of your screen. Hopefully you can jump on and learn some cool things about 12.2. Anyway, on to this week's episode. It's not actually a question that came from Ask Tom the website this week. I've been in India for the last couple of weeks and we'd have a Q&A session at the end of every day. And one of the questions that came up was on SQL plan directives. We sometimes see in the execution plan output that it says three or four or one SQL plan directive was used. The question was, which SQL plan directives were the ones that were actually used for a given SQL? So I thought we'd explore that with a nice simple demo. Enjoy. So I've started off by creating a table called T, just out of DBA objects, but you can see that it's a two-part query. The first one is getting just 20 rows for the owner of sys, and then 200 rows for the owner of system. So all in all, 220 rows. It's quite a small table. I'll then put an index on the owner column. And if we go look at user tab calls to see the distribution, the various distributions there of the columns seem to suggest that the table is quite small. Object ID, which is the unique key, has 220 distinct rows. So it's a small table, 220 rows. What I'm going to do now is do a lot more inserts to copy DBA objects in it several times. So now the table is four times bigger than the statistics suggest. What this is going to do is, when the optimizer starts seeing queries against this table, it's going to go, hmm, the estimated stats don't match up with the reality, so we should see some SQL plan directives starting to come into play. So let's look at our first query. I'm doing gather plan statistics, count created from T, where the owner is sys and the object type is Java class. The estimate, if we look down toward the plan there where we have the estimated rows column, the estimate was 110 rows because the table only has 200 rows according to the statistics. In actuality, we got 207,000 rows back from the index, which ultimately became 138,000 rows back from the table. The estimates were miles out. When we go look at v$SQL, the key column there is, is re-optimizable. And we can see there that the optimizer has said yes, this query is re-optimizable. Let's now rerun the query a second time. And now when we look at the estimated rows, we have 138,000 for the estimated rows, which matches the actual rows returned. Why is this the case? Well, you can see by the notes down the bottom. We had dynamic statistics being used, statistics feedback, and one SQL plan directive was used for this statement. The question that came in on the Ask Tom Q&A panel was, what SQL plan directive was it? After all, if we go look at DBA SQL plan directives, you can see there's 350 of them. So which one was the one that actually got used for this particular SQL statement? So let's go look at v$SQL plan. Let's go find out if we can work out where those bits of information that come out from our execution plan might be stored. Just looking through those columns, if we're going to get things like sentences like which SQL plan directives were used, it's probably going to be in a fairly large column. So I'm looking at the other column, which is varchar24000. Access and filter predicates we can see in the execution plan anyway, and projections, so it won't be that. So it could be also remarks or maybe other XML, which is a TLOB. So we'll explore each of those in turn. For other, we get nothing out of the plan, so it's unlikely that the information is in there. Same, similar for remarks. When we query other XML, we do get some information. Maybe the SQL plan directive information is in there. Whenever I have some XML coming out in an unformatted fashion, a quick and easy way I do it is to wrap it within the XML type constructor, which then returns the data in fairly nicely formatted information. Now I can see there, the key sentence there is, or the key tag, is SPD, which I think we can intuitively say is SQL plan directives. It tells me that the SQL plan directive is being used, but it hasn't given me the SQL plan directive ID. So just looking at the other XML seems to suggest that at runtime, we don't get the SQL plan directives. And this is true, I checked this with the optimizer product manager, it's simply not efficient that every time you execute an SQL and parse it to actually store in the plan table the actual SQL plan directives used. So it seems like we might be out of luck. However, we can get fairly close. If we run an explain plan for the query as opposed to running the query itself, 
we know that an explain plan isn't going to be run as part of an application. It's something being done as an investigation. When we run explain plan, the information will be captured. Well, this is the information the Optimizer product manager told me. When I go look there, I do select star from DBMS X plan display, format of all, give me all the information. I once again get the familiar one SQL plan directive. It doesn't tell me which one it is. That seems disappointing. However, what you have to do is add the keyword plus metrics. That gives you more information for the output for DBMS X plan. And if we scroll down there, we can see SQL plan directive information, and we actually have the particular directive ID used. So that's a way of getting very, very close to getting the directive ID used at execution time. The best we can do is using an explain plan. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you all again next week on Ask Tom TV.